A lot of legendary Pokemon throughout the Pokemon franchise's history, especially in recent times, have been guardians of sorts. The Tapu clan being guardians of certain islands in the Alola region, the Swords of Justice in Unova, Zacian and Zamazenta being the legendaries to save Galar from Eternatus. A lot of good guys, but not enough destructive demons in my opinion. Well, look no further because Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's Paldea region has given us not one, but four new legendary Pokemon that have caused nothing but destruction in their past. So this video will cover everything we know so far about the treasures of ruined Pokemon, from their general history to their individual strengths and what might be in store for them in the future for these games. Assuming we get DLC, of course, which seems very likely, I think. Of course, quick spoiler warning for those who don't want to know the information I'm about to present here. The tale of these Pokemon was originally a tale of urban legend. Long ago, a former king of the land that eventually became Paldea was a very greedy man who loved to collect treasure, mainly taking a liking to treasure from countries that weren't his own. Eventually, a merchant from the east wanted to meet this king to give him four specific treasures. These treasures were a vessel, a sword, a set of tablets, and a set of beads. The king was pleased by these treasures and paid the merchant handsomely. The wooden tablets in particular were very high quality for the king to have considered them worthy of treasure. However, the same night the king received these treasures, tragedy struck reducing his entire castle to rubble by the next morning. In reality, the four treasures the king received were actually Pokemon. The treasures themselves became corrupted by humanity's greed over time as they were passed around to more and more people. It kind of reminds me of how the Calamity Box was handled in the past from the Disney show Amphibia. The king was the straw that broke the camel's back, causing the four Pokemon to go on an unstoppable rampage, forcing the king to ask renowned Pokemon wielders to defend the country's land. After a grueling battle, the Pokemon wielders were able to defeat the four Calamity calamities, eventually sealing them away in different areas across the Paldea region. Some still don't believe this legend to be true, but the player can easily prove it to be. Not only do the shrines that have the Pokemon behind them exist in the world, but there are several stakes of varying colors scattered around as well. Pulling out eight of a specific color will allow you to unlock the shrine and release one of the ruinous Pokemon, where you'll get a chance to battle one of them. Removing eight of the green stakes and visiting the Ground Blight Shrine will allow you to battle Ting Lu, a dark ground type Pokemon with probably one of my favorite new cries in all the Pokemon. According to its Pokedex entries, the fear poured into this ancient ritual vessel on its head clad itself in dirt to become a Pokemon, and it's able to slam its heavy head into the ground with enough force to split the earth open with huge fissures that can run over 160 feet deep. Stat-wise, Ting Lu is the bulkiest of the quartet with a whopping 155 HP, 125 defense, and 80 special defense, still sporting a decent physical attack stat of 110 too. Ting Lu and actually the other three legendary sports a signature move called Ruination, a dark type move that always deals half of what the opponent's current HP bar is at. For example, if a mon is at 100 HP left in the yellow, Ruination will bring it down to 50 HP. Same goes for if a mon only has 6 HP left, Ruination will bring it down to 3 HP. It's exactly like how the move Shadow Half from Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness worked. Ting Lu also has a unique ability called Vessel of Ruin, which drops the special attack of any surrounding Pokemon by 25%. Ting Lu's body is more than likely based on a typical moose or elk with the vessel on its head being based on a ding, an ancient Chinese cauldron that would serve as a symbol of imperial authority, which ties in well with the names of the Pokemon themselves coming from the Chinese language. Also, the two-eyed design commonly found on these cauldrons are linked to the Tautie, which is a gluttonous creature known as one of the Four Perils, once again tying into there being four of these legendary Pokemon. Ting Lu's name itself potentially originated from the Chinese word for cauldron being ding and the word for deer being blue. Next is Shen Pao, a dark ice type which can be fought after removing eight of the orange colored stakes and going to the Ice Ren Shrine. The Pokedex states the hatred of those who died by the sword in its mouth clad itself in snow to become a Pokemon. The base of the sword being in one fang and the tip being in the other. Plus, Shen Pao can control 100 tons of fallen and snow and will playfully jump in and out of the avalanches it can create. In terms of stats, it has the same base stat total as the others, that being 570, but it's on the frailer side defensively, having 80 in both HP and defense and 65 in special defense. However, it more than makes up for this for its insanely high 120 physical attack stat and 135 speed. This thing is Weavile on steroids. Further adding to this is its ability Sword of Ruin, which lowers the physical defense of surrounding Pokemon by 25%. Shen Pao's body was likely based on a Snow Leopard while also having some characteristics of weasels too. The sword in its mouth may be a reference to GN, aka a double-edged straight sword used in China for the past 
2,500 years. It takes inspiration from the four perils I previously mentioned too, specifically Shang-Chi, a man-eating creature that is comparable to the Japanese Kama Itachi, a creature that both Sneasel and Weavile are said to be inspired after, coincidentally sharing the same type combo as Shen Pao. Shen Pao's name likely comes from the combination of Zhen, the Chinese word for sword, and Bao, the Chinese word for leopard. Wo Shen is the third of the bunch, obtainable if you remove all eight purple stakes and visit the Grass Wither Shine. This dark grass snail pile of leaves was created through the grudge of a person who was punished for writing a king's evil deeds on wooden tablets. It also can drain the life force from vegetation, which results in forests that are close enough to this Pokemon to wither. Even fields will turn barren. Stat-wise, it's a bit more well-rounded across the board compared to the previous two mentioned, with its highest stat being Special Defense at 135. Unfortunately, this Pokemon is a very weak defensive type combo, so most super effective physical attacks will be pretty dangerous, especially bug type ones. Wo Shen's ability, Tablets of Ruin, specifically lowers the attack stat by 25%, which is unfortunate because it's essentially a worse version of the ability Intimidate, which lowers a Pokemon's attack stat by 33.3%, if I'm not mistaken. As it seems fairly obvious, this Pokemon is modeled after a Welk Snail with the tablets on his back referencing bamboo slips, which is what China used to write on during the first two centuries of AD, just like the ancient Paldans. Wo Shen's name is made up of the Chinese word for snail being wo, and the Chinese word for bamboo slips being jian. Finally, we have Chi Yu, the dark fire type goldfish that can be battled after pulling out eight blue colored stakes and visiting the fire scourge shrine. A great amount of envy festered within the four beads around its eyes, cladding itself in fire to become a Pokemon. This fish also controls flames that can be up to 5400 degrees Fahrenheit, where it will casually swim through lava it makes by melting rock with its flames. Chi Yu is similar to its brother Shen Pao, where it's very frail but hits very hard. Sporting a 135 special attack stat with 120 special defense and 100 speed as its most notable. Coupled with its ability, Beads of Ruin, which lowers the special defense of surrounding Pokemon by 25%, allowing it to hit even harder than it already does. The curved beads around Shiyu's eyes are inspired by Magatama, which are curved shaped beads from Japan that are made up of jade and were used as religious or ceremonial objects. The name for this Pokemon potentially comes from the Chinese word for goldfish being Jiyu and Ia for the word jade. Apologies if I butchered the pronunciation on some of these, because that's very much possible. As for the DLC, perhaps we could get more information about who the former king actually was, or who the merchant that gave him the treasure was, perhaps introducing new characters that could be descendants of those two. I think I'd be most curious about what region the merchant came from, to be honest. If it was a region we already know exists, or we could get a tease for the next region we go to for the 10th generation of Pokemon. Well, that's everything you need to know about the Pokemon known as the Treasures of Ruin. Let me know in the comments below what which one of these guys is your favorite and what you think a Scarlet and Violet DLC could reveal about them that we don't already know. I'd love to know your thoughts. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe with the notifications turned on. But for now, I will see you guys next time. Peace out. Take care. Bye-bye.